Welcome to Inside Analog Photo. I'm your host, Scott Shepard, and the Inside Analog Photography Radio Program is brought to you by Fujifilm, making life more colorful. You know they have great color neck C41 process film, of course, E6 slide, reversal film, instant film, black and white film, and the new Instex is here in the country. They have Polaroid replacement, three and a quarter by four and a quarter, four by five color, black and white. Just a lot of great stuff going on Fuji. Check them out over at www.fujifilmusa.com forward slash professional, making life more colorful. Our friends over at Richard Photo Lab for the place to send all of your film, www.richardphotolab.com. Great lab in Hollywood, California, used by many, many, many professionals, including our guests coming up here next. And our friends over at Upstrap at upstrap-pro.com for a camera strap that will not let the camera slide off your shoulder. Check out Al's great product, Upstrap. Great, great product. And, of course, our media partners of the Analog Photography User Group over at www.apug.org. The place on the net for all traditional photographic process. Great stuff going on. If you have a question that needs to be answered, you will be able to find out by somebody over in the forums at APUG. Great stuff going on over there. We got a cool show line today. We have with us today Jose Villa. Jose is a professional portrait and wedding photographer based out of Central California. He is a film shooter. He shoots exclusively Fuji film. So we're going to talk to Jose about how he got into photography, his style, his equipment, his exposures, his thought process behind the business, what's going on in the industry, how he does his work, his gear, all this great stuff. You know, you got to check out his website. He's got beautiful, beautiful work. We're going to give you that address here. It's on the website, of course. All this great information over at www.insideanalogphoto.com. Jose, how you doing today, buddy? Good, how are you? Great, thanks for joining us here on Inside Analog Photo. Jose, we want to talk to you today. You are a very prominent wedding and portrait photographer in the Central California area. You shoot film. You do some beautiful wedding work, lots of great portrait stuff, but you're a specialized shooter. Your niche is, well, to other photographers, it's film. Now, I think to your customer, it's just you have beautiful images and they love the way it looks. So why don't we talk about Jose right now? Give me a little background on yourself. How'd you get into photography, your education and all that kind of stuff? I live in Solving, which is actually the Danish capital of America. Kind of funny. I went to school here and went to San Inez High School. So then from there, went to Brooks Institute of Photography, which was a three-year program and got my bachelor's. I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do as far as photography goes. All I knew is that I really loved portraits and I loved taking pictures of kids and babies. And so I started my studio here in Solving. I opened the doors up. My rent was $350. I didn't have any clients until I could afford a sign on the top of my building. I was just in my office, just with the doors open, hoping people would just walk in and see my stuff. And I had some pictures up on the walls. I had bright red walls and uh, gallery lighting, and that attracted people. So then I got into weddings because of one of my clients. Asked me if I photograph weddings. She wanted me to photograph her sister's wedding. I said no. I turned it down. And then I talked to a friend of mine who I was going to school with at the time. She was a commercial advertising photographer. And I told her about this inquiry. And she said, actually, why don't you take it? It would be great. I'll help you out. And I said, okay, cool. Sounds good. So with her helping me out, we both shot the wedding. And we weren't told what to do. We just did whatever we wanted to do. The bride and groom got their pictures back two weeks later. They loved them. And the rest is history. I could say that because then people started to contact me based on word of mouth. Today, I shoot pretty much about 90% of my work now is wedding photography, and I still do some kids' photography as well. Weddings is my main deal. So I love it. I shoot film, like you mentioned, 100%. I love the look of film. There's many reasons why I shoot film. For me, the biggest is because of the look. There's a specific look that I love to do, and I have this formula of how I photograph my images or how I expose my negative film. It's been great. I really, really love it. It's attracting an amazing type of clientele. It's been awesome. This year has been the busiest year so far. So I'm excited to see what happens in 2009 and beyond. So yeah. Let's talk about the state of wedding photography. You know, we have the entry point very easy now with people that, at least on the digital end, can buy a kit camera and there's all these people doing wedding photography. I think people don't even understand how even the entry level is even easier if you're shooting film because you can go get some used equipment. Extremely economical. What have you seen going on recently with people that are doing digital and in wedding photography and how they've maybe diluted some of the business? What's your thoughts on this whole environment we're dealing with now when it comes to the wedding and portrait business 
with people that are doing digital and how it might be actually diluting some of the great photography when they're having to deal with entry-level subpar stuff. It's interesting to me because, you know, I do these workshops and I started doing workshops about a year ago. The reason I started doing workshops was because photographers from all over the world were just emailing me and asking me how I get a specific look, what I'm photographing and if I'm photographing film, how I photograph film because they also love the look of film. In doing these workshops, most of the photographers that come to my workshops, I'd say, gosh, maybe out of 20 that come, 18 of them are digital photographers. They really just want to know about the business and the advertising and all that good stuff. But what I'm noticing is that they know nothing about film. They know nothing about where film came from, how you expose it, how you can hand develop it, hand print it. And that, to me, is really unfortunate. I try not to get too deep into that because, like I said, only two of them would shoot film and the rest would shoot digital. So they really don't care. They just want to get the sense of how to book these weddings and how to attract a certain clientele, maybe how to get published, et cetera, et cetera. But I see that. It's really sad to me because I went to school. I went to photography school for this, and I was hand printing everything. The love for me is in the dark room. I love to be able to burn and dodge and do these old processes like Van Dyke and all these amazing sepia toning and stuff like that, and which takes a long time. A lot of these photographers, they love digital, and that's actually where it all started for them. The first camera they ever picked up was a digital camera. What I'm noticing, too, is that they're really applying these actions to their images. For me, it'd be a little bit diluting. So I always tell my attendees to back off a little bit on the images. They'll last a lot longer. I think for me, by that, I mean a lot of my clients or potential clients that come to me, they love the look that I have. It's very raw. It's very organic. It's definitely not going to date as fast as maybe a digital photograph that was maybe manipulated, has over-vignette, and is over-processed. And a lot of my clients love that. They love the raw simplicity of it. And I'm attracting those type of clients, obviously, who love film, but also love the look, the way I'm capturing images and et cetera, and how I'm not overly applying these actions. There are actions out there. There are some actions that I do use myself, maybe convert a color image into black and white. But I try not to go over the top because I think 15, 20 years down the road, what is this image going to look like if, for example, we put a ton of vignette in it or overprocess or make it look at 670. I always want to make sure that it's very raw and organic because it will last 20, 30, 40 years when you look at it. It's still going to look very beautiful, how we see it and how my eye saw it during that day and how the bride saw it. So that's what I love too about the simplicity of shooting film and not applying these actions. I don't use any filters on my cameras. I don't do anything that might make it look like it really didn't look like other than maybe simplicity and how beautiful I can make it by simplifying it with lighting or composition or whatever. It's interesting to see how the whole digital phenomenon has sort of transitioned so much of what's going on into wedding photography, the look of wedding photography. When I was going through school, of course, shooting film, you have to wait sometimes two, three weeks to get your film back. And so you learn so much slower than with digital. Obviously, you take a picture and you see the back LCD screen and there you are. And then you can adjust it and then sort of learn on your own. Where when I went to school, it wasn't that way. So it's interesting. But you know what? There's a lot of great digital photographers out there. I love digital. I think digital is great, but not for what I'm looking for in wedding photography. I have a 5D. I shoot digital myself, but I don't shoot it for weddings at all. I shoot it for commercial stuff, stuff that I can just import myself and uh, get a DVD to the client or whatever it is that I'm delivering to them, and that's it. Weddings is a whole different story. I shoot 50 weddings a year. There's absolutely no way that I could shoot everything in digital, make it look how I love the look of film, and still shoot 50 weddings a year. I don't think that I can do that. Or I'd have to hire two, three people to do that in front of a computer. And that's just not the way I want to do my business. I want to do everything myself. I want to have full control while I'm shooting it. So it's interesting. It's really, really interesting. And it's exciting also to see where it's going because all these new cameras that are coming out, the one, I don't know the name of it, to be honest, but the one with the video, the Canon video still photography camera is really interesting. So It's really, really interesting to see what's going to happen. But, you know, I don't feel like I'm very much affected by any of that because film is such a big niche for me now where potential clients that are coming to me, they're coming to me because they're looking for a film photographer. So I'm no longer competing with any digital photographer out there at all. It's either myself or another photographer locally here that shoots film. So it's been a really great time for me to see what's happening in this industry. What have you seen actually in your marketing? Have you been using the film niche as a helping deal for you to gain more clients that are looking for the film work. Do you have anything coded on your website that basically says, I don't shoot digital, I only use film for this reason? Or has it sort of just been populated through word of mouth that, well, if you want to have some great photography done for the wedding and portrait segment, go to Jose because he's shooting film. Yeah, I just want it to be word of mouth. 
I could put it on my site. I'm a 100% film photographer, but I don't know. For me, I love photography. I am a photographer. I learned marketing and advertising the hard way. (laughs) I did not have any experience with marketing or advertising, nothing. So I've always let my pictures speak for themselves. And that's what I'm doing here is with my images. I want my images to speak for themselves. Now, if people love the look, they're going to come and they're going to ask me if they don't know that I have shoot film. They're going to ask me, hey, do you shoot film or do you shoot digital? Or, you know, maybe they won't even ask me. They don't even know. And they don't even care because they just love the look. So I would say probably maybe 20% of potential clients that end up being my clients don't even know, don't even care. But I would say the 80% are coming to me because it's a word of mouth thing. And they either read it in an article somewhere or their friends I photographed and they knew that I photographed with film or maybe a wedding coordinator. Maybe this bride and groom are looking to get married in this area and they're contacting the higher end coordinators that are referring us, film shooters, because that's what they're looking for. And most of my clients these days, it's really interesting what's happened because over the last year, most of my clients have transitioned into being art directors, makeup artists, photographers. In 2008, I kid you not, but I photographed at least 12, 13 photographers' weddings. They all shoot digital, (laughs) and they still love the look of film. So they're shooting digital because that's how they want to run their business. But if they were to get married, and which, of course, these 12 photographers are digital photographers, they want a film shooter because they love the look. So I want it to be about the word of mouth. I want people to look at my images and say, wow, I love the simplicity. I love the rawness, the organic. You'll love that image, and that's what I want. And that's what's happening. Every other email that I get from potential clients, it's, oh my gosh, I love your work. It's not over-processed. It doesn't look digital. We love it. We want it. Are you available? And then we start this back and forth. So I'm not into advertising it like crazy because I don't think it's about that. It's just about knocking people's socks off (laughs) with great photography. And then we can chat about that later. Sure. I mean, like you said, it's all about the final image, the print, what you have done when you're supplying this to your customer. Have you actually had people approach you, they love your work, and then when you tell them, or they even bring up the digital versus film and they don't like the film, so have you had people actually turn away because you are shooting film? Not at all. I did have one client or potential client who called me, and she said right off the bat, she didn't know if I had shot digital or film, but she asked me, basically she said, look, I'm having a green wedding. We don't want a film shooter because of the chemicals and all this other stuff that gets into the environment and all that stuff. I told her, I said, look, I shoot film. And then that was when we stopped our conversation and she ended up going with a digital photographer. And in that case, that's totally fine. I mean, I understand. I love the fact that everyone's really becoming a little bit more sort of aware of the environment. And I love that. That's great. This client wasn't for me. And so that was totally fine with that. That doesn't happen. I mean, it's very, very rare. That's only happened once. I've been in business for six and a half years. Let's talk about this look that you've been able to create with film. Let's talk about gear first, and then we'll go into film and sort of your style of exposing and so forth. What's Jose shooting on gear-wise? I shoot medium format contact 645, and the only lens that I shoot with it is an 80 2.0. That's my primary camera. I love the look of it. The Carl Zeiss lenses on that camera are just tack sharp. I love the shallow depth of field. It's very beautiful and goes very well with the way that I expose my film. It's very pastel-y, and with a very shallow depth of field, it goes really great. The other two cameras that I shoot with are 35mm 1V cameras. That's Canon. I have like three or four lenses for those two cameras. I have a macro 100, 2.8, 16 to 35, 2.8, 70 to 200, 2.8, and an 85-1.2, which I really love and has a very contact medium format look to it. And then the film that I use is all Fuji. I love the look of Fuji. And I've tested films for years. I mean, that's all I did for three full years in school before I actually started to do my own photography. I tested Agfa. I mean, there's not even Agfa out there anymore, I don't think. But I tested Ilford. I tested Fuji. I tested Kodak. You name it, that's what we did for three full years. That was the whole point, really, of going through school is testing and, you know, everything. Testing lighting, testing chemicals, temperatures, you name it. It was about just testing to seeing something that we love to creating a formula. And so, The outcome of it three years later when I graduated was that I loved the look of film. I loved the look of Fuji, I should say. The look of Fuji was really beautiful. And when I overexposed it, it just became really soft. And of course, depending on the lighting and the lighting situation I was choosing, which usually ended up being flat lighting. So everything might have been just shot in the shade, indoors, maybe window light. 
backlighting, or what I call skylighting, which is when the sun has hit the horizon. What the subject is being lit by is just the sky. And so I shoot mainly 400 Pro H Fuji, and I expose it at ISO 200. So that's how I control the exposure. The overexpose of the film is just by doing it on the ISO and the camera. There's many other ways of shooting it, but for me, this is how I do it. So with you overexposing, pulling the film in camera this way, this gives you a pastel look. You get more of the shadow details. Pulling the film a stop over. This is giving you more of your pastel look. This is- yeah, and then I'm exposing to the shadow. So all the highlights are, they're blowing out, but not so much so that there's no detail. Because what I love about film is that it holds great detail. I mean, it can hold up to three stops. Sometimes I've even been able to hold detail in four stops overexposed on a wedding gown. And the faces still look really beautiful. And I've had a lot of clients say, wow, I noticed that my blemishes are gone, you know, or my under eye, it looks great because it's overexposing, but the skin tone still has the very natural look of what the real skin tone looks like when you're looking at somebody in real life. Well, on digital, it shifts all over the place and you have to make it look like that consistently. And so that's what really time consuming for me, even when I shoot commercial stuff and advertising stuff, because we're in different lighting situations, of course, with weddings, you're all over the place. I mean, you could be encountering six different types of lighting conditions in like three hours. That's what I love about the consistency with film and the skin tone is that it's very, very much consistent instead of the whole digital thing where it's so hard. It's so hard to make the skin tones look consistent. And that really bothers me because since I have formal training, I'm looking for that kind of stuff. I make sure that my skin tones are natural. I make sure that there isn't a blue shift, a green shift, whatever it is. If we're photographing on the grass, making sure that the grass lighting doesn't bounce up into their face and then their face looks green. With film, at least with this type of process that I'm doing, it's very easy on my lab to just dial in a certain color. So, yes, they're doing all the work, and then I just get it back, and then it's, for me, every time, it's beautiful. I don't have to do anything. I just have to edit the bad ones, blinkers, and then send it out to my client. I am exposing to the shadow, yeah. Let's use an example, the 1V Canon camera. Are you using spot metering overall matrix for the scene, or using a handheld meter, or are you just doing everything manual? Because you've shot enough to where you know, okay, well, this scene's going to look this way at this. Well, I do know lighting situations. So I can tell you what the lighting situation would be anywhere. I have a great sense of what the lighting is, again, only because of my formal training. Now, I don't do that, though, in weddings because we shift so fast that through different lighting situations. I'm doing spot metering, and I'm usually spot metering in the shadow, which a lot of times ends up being like on the bride's face, her neck, or maybe like the groom's face or chest area. And then I get an overall sort of meter there. I actually shoot everything on aperture priority. So I do get a sense of what the exposure is going to be. If it's backlit, then I'll change it to manual. I'll make sure that I have my correct lighting situation first and shoot everything in manual. So again, it's very consistent. With aperture priority, what happens with backlighting is that it just goes all over the place. So yes, I do have partial control as far as aperture priority. And then I put it on full control in certain lighting situations. Do you tend to shoot pretty much everything wide open? Yep. Even in really bright light situation. If I'm outside and it's noon it, with my contacts at 2.0, I'm shooting it at 2.0. So you're just compensating for shutter and that's it. I mean, you want this mm-hmm. depth of field and that's, that's, a, I mean, that's part of the look I think that you're getting with your photography and over exposed film is this very pastel, creamy, dream light state. Everything in the background's out of focus. It's all part of the, I think, your look that's very unique and cool. Yes, exactly. What? Do you deal with when it comes to other lighting conditions to where when you're shooting a wedding, it gets really dark, it's getting evening time? Do you step your film speed up to maybe an 800 speed film? Do you always stick with the 400 with one stop or using any kind of flash? And how are you dealing with that? I shoot with about six different films. Depending on the lighting situation, if it's, let's say, going into the reception, then I might be shooting with 800 speed film. Or then if it's really dark lighting situation, it's just candlelit, let's just say, then I'm shooting with 1600 speed film. And so definitely controlling every lighting situation by using a specific film with a specific lens, because that 85 can dial down to 1.2. That's what I love about it. I shoot that mainly for the reception. My shutter speeds, for the most part, are usually 30th of a second, 60th of a second, which I'm totally fine with using 1600 speed film. So That usually saves me when I'm doing the whole reception thing. Now, I will say that with digital, one great thing about digital is that it's very sensitive to low light, and I love it. It looks beautiful. 
I'm still comfortable with my film during the reception time, so I'm going to keep with it until it gets a little bit harder to obtain certain films. But yeah, I mean, I have shot some digital stuff just to play around with in low light, and it's beautiful. So the only thing about that is I just don't want to take it into the computer and then start to make that look more consistent with my film work, which would just take me way too long. And what I shoot, it just doesn't go great with my workflow right now. Do you use any external lighting, maybe a flashlight? A lot of people have been using some video spotlighting stuff, or do you do any flash, or is it all available? And if I have to, I'll shoot the 1600. At 16, I won't overexpose pretty much all available light, or you use any additional? I did just start to use that. It's a Sony video light. I don't know the exact model, to be honest with you, but I do love it because in really low light situation, I could use my contacts, medium format, maybe backlight the cake, for example. They're usually all exposed to the shadow, and it looks really, really beautiful. So the great thing about that light is that it has an option for lower light, and then you can power up to full strength. So you have more of that control. Regularly, though, I would say the majority of the time I'm shooting with a Canon flash, the 580, the newest flash. And so that goes on my camera, my Canon, and I'm doing ETTL minus one third, and I'm setting my camera at aperture priority. And the reason for that, let's say, for example, if I have 1600 speed film in there, I'm going to be shooting it at 800. Or let's say, depending on the lighting situation, I might shoot it at 1600. And I'll do aperture priority to get the ambient in the background and use my flash at ETTL minus a third, sometimes two thirds, just to pop in the flash in their face, just a little bit, just a touch, just so at least they don't have under eye or at least they have a catch light in their eyes. And that works out really great. My backdrop doesn't turn black. I get really beautiful ambient warm light in the background and there's a little bit of movement. If people are dancing, it's beautiful. So that's usually what I end up doing with the reception shot. Very interesting to be able to dial it down a third or two thirds of a stop down. And like you said, just give a little bit of fill, bring your main subject into a little bit better light, but they still have the dreamy, premium, Mm -hmm. out of focus, wide apertures. Yeah, and all of that is still shot at 2.8. Usually the shutter speed will be a 60th of a second or sometimes even a 30th of a second in some cases. There might be some movement in the background, but it's not overly done where you have just a little bit of the flash. Now, I am basically controlling everything in camera and in the flash, again, so I don't have to mess with anything later. All I want my lab to do is process my stuff at normal. I don't tell them anything. I've never told them, now of course they know, but I've never told them that I've overexposed my film a stop or two stops, because sometimes I do overexpose two stops, depending on, again, the location and lighting situation. I just say, here, here you go, run it, and that's it. And then they run it, and then usually, you know, because everything was so controlled in camera, they just have to dial in for color. Not even density, really, because everything is so controlled. So let's talk about your process. You've shot the wedding. You take the film. You package it up. You send it to the lab. Let's talk about what kind of lab you're using. And like you said, this is pretty much just a straight development. They scan the stuff for you. What do you use for a scanner? What do you like to have your work scanned on? I love the Fuji Frontier. Old school. (laughs) The newest printers these days are the Noritsus. And yes, they are faster. You know, I just, I can't get myself to love the look of the Noritsu scanning and the printing. And so that's why I'm using the Frontier. It's Fuji Frontier. It only makes sense. I mean, I shoot Fuji film. When I incorporate the Fuji Frontier and then the Fuji paper and the Fuji chemicals, it just is all very consistent. It just becomes a great specific look that I like. So yes, it is very slow. My lab actually, to be honest with you, I'm sure they moan and complain when I send them 50 rolls of medium format film from a couple weddings that I've shot. Because it takes a long time. It takes twice as long as 35 millimeter. Somebody has to stay there and dust my stuff. The negatives are very attracted to dust. It's a magnet, really. That's one of the main things that I don't really love about getting my stuff scanned is that there is dust and we have to spend time dusting it. Now, it's not that bad because my lab does try to take out as much dust as possible. And then they're being scanned at 11 by 14 at 300 DPI. All my stuff is right now. But I do have the option, of course, to get them scanned at 16 by 20 which some jobs I do, depending on what the client wants. The cool thing, though, is that when I bring up an image on my screen from one of those scanned rolls, and then I bring up that same image on a proof, it's very, very close. It's to the T. All of the adjustments have already been made. All I have to do is maybe dust a little bit, take me 10 seconds, because I've now created an action for it. Just do a little bit of maybe color correcting if I don't really love their color correction, which a lot of times I'm pretty happy with it, but maybe bringing up the density a little bit. 
maybe just making sure that my highlights are good, my blacks are black, and that's it. It's very fast. I don't usually spend more than literally a minute on an image. It's very rare for me to spend more than five minutes on an image. Wow, that's great. So with the Fuji Frontier Scanner, they're using the 2500 or the 3000. Do you know which one? I don't know that, to be honest with you. But it's Richard Photo Lab. They're based out of L.A. The owner's name is Ryan Greenberg, and they just bought another Frontier. I just talked to him a couple days ago. They've been working with Frontiers for a really long time, but they just bought a new one. A new one to them, but not a new one. <laughs> They bought it from another lab. Now they can do a lot more film, and we can get our images a lot faster. Typically, turnaround time is about two weeks, but I think they're trying to make it even faster for us because, you know, with this digital age, everybody wants their images faster. Speaking of that, a lot of people that do shoot digital present some type of slideshow or multimedia-type display at the reception. Have you found any body say anything, or are they just more concentrated on, well, we just love Jose's images, and they're not even expecting no, some kind I've- of show at the reception? No, I've never been asked, ever, ever, ever. I've never been asked, can you bring a slideshow? And some of my friends do this, but I have had some clients say, I hope you don't do the slideshows because it's very annoying (laughs) and it takes the attention away from our day. And of course, I don't really have any opinions about it, except that, of course, I can't do it with film. I think it can be a great idea. I just think that some brides are not into it at all. 100% of my brides don't even care about it. They do love, though, the fact that they can get their stuff scanned on a DVD. That's very important these days. So I sell them the negatives, and then I also sell them a DVD, depending on what size it is that they want, and that's priced accordingly. Some of my clients like online galleries, and some don't. But, you know, for the majority, most of my clients really don't care about the online galleries. What they do love, which is a great service, is they love slideshows online, because then they can just email that link over to their friends and family who were at the wedding or maybe who couldn't make it to the wedding. It's a great show. I use Show It Fast, so it's a great service. It's really fast, really great way to do it. A lot of times it brings in some new clients, and I'd rather do it that way because, again, it's all about the photography. I want people to really get it and enjoy it at home versus at a wedding where they're trying to pay attention to the bride and groom. I heard other stories about all of the guests are outside watching the show while the first dance is going on. So I think it can really throw off the day, and I don't want to make anybody upset during their day, especially the bride. So I think it takes a specific bride. It takes a specific type of client that would love that digital sort of slideshow thing, which I think is a great idea, but it doesn't work for me. No, I don't think so either. So let's talk about your deliverable. You actually produce an album that has a true photographic print in it. I think most of your stuff is that way. I don't know. You're doing any kind of digital output where they're more of a collage thing, or are you using a true matted album? You know, I'm doing the true matted albums, but I also am doing the flush bound albums. I use Queensberry and Cypress. Those are my two companies that I use. Cypress has a new product. Actually, it's about a year and a half old. It's called Iris, and it's a flush-bound album, which I think is beautiful. It's really, really great. Also, Queensberry has their flush-bound albums, which are some of the best in the industry. So the reason that I think that's happening is because people love the look of the digital flush-bound, but they love the film photography in them. Because we get everything scanned at high resolution, we're able to do these sort of digital albums, which I love myself. I think they're beautiful. I think that the fine art albums are sort of phasing out a little bit, at least for me in my business here. I try to push the flush bound albums anyway. I think those are really great these days. I think it's cool that you actually offer the fine art style matted album, but then also, yes, we do do the contemporary style flush mount. Mm -hmm. That still gives the bride anything she wants. I mean, basically, that's the bottom line. You're catering toward your customer, and whatever your customer wants, She's going to have it, or he, whatever. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Jose, I want to talk about here your workshops. You've done some workshops in Mexico, other parts of the U.S., all around everywhere. You do one-on-one stuff. Tell me about how Jose is out helping other photographers learn just great photography. Because like I said, people don't have that background of going to Brooks. Some mm-hmm. do, most don't, or RIT, or there's some other great photography schools. And I think that people can learn a lot by going to a workshop like yours to spend a couple days, three, four days, or even if they want to cough up enough, they can do a one-on-one that's really going to give them some great instruction. Tell me about what you're doing with these. Well, you know, the reason I started doing workshops, because I always consider myself to be more of a shy type of person, to be honest, and I always kept to myself on my photography. My brides love that. The type of bride that I have They love the more mellow, sort of calm photographer to shoot their wedding. And I know a lot of photographer friends that are very fun and outgoing during the day, and that's because that's the type of client they're attracting. So it's interesting to see. But going into the workshops, 
I never thought I would be doing workshops, but people kept emailing me and emailing and, and emailing me, and I, you know, I didn't really understand why people were emailing me because I was just shooting. I just love photography. I love photographing weddings. People were emailing me, and it's, it's, it's such a different industry today than it was when I started. When I started, people were a little bit more reserved. They didn't, they were very protective of their information. And I wish that when I was starting, I had someone like Jose Villa to go to or Joe Busink or someone who's doing these workshops with great information. And so I decided that after I got my 100th or so email, after throwing them all into a folder, I decided, why am I not offering this? Because I want people to really know the business and industry and the marketing and the, even great photography and composition and the list goes on without having to go to a photography school because, I mean, photography school costs sometimes more than $100,000 for a three-year program. It's expensive, but yes, of course, like any college, any university or private school, it is expensive. But what I was noticing and I started to think about this is that when I was going through school, if I had maybe 10 instructors, only one of them was really a working photographer. The other nine could not tell me anything about the industry. How much would I, could I sell a portrait session for today? If I were to ask them that when I was in school, they'd probably say, I'm not sure. You might want to ask a photographer in your area. And so I thought, well, gosh, there needs to be more workshops out there. So finally, I decided to offer these workshops, and they've been filling. Every single workshop that I've had pretty much has been sold out. It's been great. I really love it. I love the fact that I'm able to share my information and my experiences mostly because people relate to that and people can get inspired by that, which has been a great thing for me. I've met some really great people. I've learned myself when I do these and it's great all around. So I do my favorite workshop that I do a year, once a year, is my Mexico workshop. And that really is very close to me because I am Mexican and I was born in Mexico. So we rent out a hacienda, which is kind of like an Italian via. For those who don't know what a hacienda is, it's about a 350-year-old hacienda. We rent it all out. We have our private chef, and we have about 20 or so photographers from all over the world comes. It's really, really great. I get to invite my family to come out the first day, and then we hire some traditional Mexican dancers and mariachi bands, and it's great. It's really, really awesome. And then we hire these models to come out and photograph in the streets of Mexico. We shoot traditional sort of people in the shots too, and haciendas, and old churches, and rustic buildings, and it's just such a great experience. But I also do one-on-ones, which are great. People come here, and they stay here at my house for three days, and we do a kid session, a baby session, a fashion shoot, which is more of a controlled lighting situation, lighting and posing workshop, I guess I want to call it, for that day. And then we have a real wedding. I actually have them come and assist me on a real wedding, which is really awesome for them to get a sense of that. I open up my home. I open up my studio. I open up my books and I let them know this is exactly how I do it. I'm an open book. And I only do five of those a year. I've been doing them for two years. Both years have booked, which have been great. So it's been a great experience. I plan on continuing to do those. I don't have any 2009 dates yet. I'm working on those and hopefully we'll be announcing that within the next two or three weeks, possibly maybe in January, kind of looking at my schedule right now, announcing my new dates in January. So it should be very fun. I will be also speaking at WPPI as a master class. Not speaking on a platform this year. I decided to take a little bit of a break. Hopefully, be back next year. It's just a lot of work for preparation, but I love it. It's great to be out there and get to meet some great people. Great, and I think we're going to look forward to WPPI coming up. You have this great instruction going on there. It's a great place to just talk with other photographers because I think the younger, newer breed of photographer is more apt to share information than the old school crouchy. They're not mm-hmm. going to share anything. The new generation of photographer that's coming up here, everything is paid forward. It's all share and just tell everybody and everybody's learning. It's a pretty unique experience to go to WPPI. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I encourage everybody that takes my workshops, if they haven't been to WPPI, that they definitely should because it's really life-changing. I mean, you never know who you're going to meet there. You know, the first year I was there, I met Bill Herter, who works at WPPI. He's the editor of Rangefinder, and we hit it off, and we became friends, and the rest is history. So... Um, Again, you just never know who you're going to meet there. And I always took my portfolio around the very first time I went there five years ago or four years ago, I guess. I brought my little rinky-dinky portfolio and I showed it to Bill and and he loved it. And that's how we have become great friends. So now when he needs certain images or he wants to write up or something in his magazine and he's looking for a specific thing like film or whatever, he knows who to call. So it's great. I love it. So Jose, tell me your website address so people can go look at your great work. Tell me about your workshops, where people can find out all this information about what you're doing, because it's just some stunning, great stuff. It's beautiful to see that it's captured on film, and it's just very cool. Yeah, so you can go to Jose, it's J-O-S-E, Via, it's V as in Victor, 
I-L-L-A.com, so it's Hosevia.com. Or if you're interested in workshops or just reading up on them or seeing what other people are saying about them, then you can go to Jose Via Workshops, plural, dot com, and check it out there. But I also have a blog, and you can get to my blog through either of those websites if you want to keep up with my journal and see what's going on on a daily basis. It's great stuff, and I do appreciate you taking time this day to talk to us here on Inside Analog Photo, and just great stuff. Very cool to see that you're shooting film and creating these beautiful, unique images and keeping the traditional photographic process alive. Good stuff. Great. Well, thank you so much for the opportunity. It's been great. Well, there you go, Jose Villa. Isn't he a great guy? Beautiful, beautiful photography, all film. Great stuff. Excellent inspiration for everybody that's shooting film. Just beautiful, beautiful, true traditional photographic process. Great stuff. I've been your host, Scott Shepard, here on Inside Analog Photo. And, of course, you can find out more information about our sponsors, Fujifilm over at www.fujifilmusa.com. Richard Photo Lab at www.richardphotolab.com and Upstrap over at upstrap-pro.com. And our media partner of the Analog Photography User Group over at www.apug.org. You can find out all the information about our program, everything going on, our past guests, lots of great information over at www.insideanalogphoto.com. We'll be back next week with more great analog photography. 